And I've just got a mystery guest here that's just joined me. Uh, this is T-Man, and some people are going to know him. He's a bit infamous on the net, but anyway, his name is T-Man. That's the name he goes by. It's like a moniker, and he is a member of the White Hats, and uh, I'm allowed to say that much. And I have to say that uh, we've been working on something this weekend, a, t a publication to get out to people, and he wanted to come on my show <laughs> to, uh, to, to talk about it. So I'm going to turn the mic over to him and let him talk to, talk to all of you, and you know, let's see how this goes. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Yeah. Just want to thank uh, Carrie for having us on the show this evening. Uh, I think we're going to take about a half hour here and and talk about uh, uh, White Hats Report Number Forty Eight. Uh, it's uh, long time coming. It's taken a while to um, to really go through all of the machinations of what we're reporting about. Uh, the, the topic will be pure heart investments, and and I think what we're going to see is that. As we're going to demonstrate, that everybody knows the long line of financial fraud from the uh, cabal, and uh, you know many people call the cabal uh, many things. You know, it's the the uh, what we would term as the underworld of the financial game here, not only in the United States but in states, but literally around the world. And in the last year, we've seen a lot of things happening. Uh, the uh, fortunate part uh, is that you can't quite put your finger at anything because of the very nature of what it is. You know, you, it's like the Japanese had $20 stolen from them uh, out of their, what equates to their social security like we have here in the States. And, you know, the unfortunate part is that you can only say that there's $20 trillion missing because there isn't much of a story behind it other than it's missing. You can't touch it. You can't feel it. We've taken it a little bit deeper, as uh, those of you who are familiar with us at the White Hats. Um, we are interested in humanity. We are interested in the sovereignty of the United States and every other country. We, uh, all in our lifetimes have taken oaths to protect and defend, and we are here to do that. Uh, there are a lot of people who do not like what we do. There are times when we don't like what we do, but it has to be done. Uh, so the 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 net effect of uh, the time that we spent here with Carrie uh, is a uh, we we jokingly call it a mutual admiration uh, when in reality it's a mutual respect. The types of things that Carrie talks about uh, in one way we talk about in another way. Uh, we recognize that. Uh, I myself. Um, didn't didn't really have a basis for conversation uh, for a site like Project Camelot just because it was so different from what we did. But then certain things started to come out, and uh, when when we needed the information, we knew who to go. By God, we're glad that we did. So, uh, collaborated. Uh, we've worked together. Uh, my time with Carrie has been uh, enlightening, intriguing, and I will hope that our two worlds will come together uh, uh, in the understanding of each other. Many people that listen and talk uh, to Carrie's uh, format uh, really don't have a lot of time to listen to the financial side of the world, and a lot of the guys on ours don't really pay a lot of time in Carrie's side of the world. What we're finding is, is that's a great segregation uh, it's a great way for the cabal and members to keep the truth suppressed. But I think, as you see in our 48, that things are going to start coming together. 48 is huge. It's, uh, it is by far the largest report that we've ever printed. And, and there. Excuse me for just a second. Thomas, can you mute? You got a noise canceling mic, and when you do it, it kills him out. Sure. So 48 is uh, very large. 48 uh, will have uh, an, an unreasonable number of documents to support positions that people can see. Uh, we, uh, you know, 
uh, we, we come from the underworld as well, if you will. Uh, we know how to collect data. We know when um, we know when we're getting lied to, and we know how to support a position. So we're hoping that uh, people will listen to 48 and, and, and look for 48 on the White Hat's website, and um, just know that Carrie has been invaluable to uh, to our research to, to help guide us and lead us down a path or what we call the rabbit hole. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, T Man. That's that's lovely. Uh, I want to give out your URL, and it is. Uh, it's tdarkcabalblogspot.com, and I think there's a slash in there somewhere. Uh, and the number for the call-ins uh, is on the website, and all you have to do is go to freedomslips.com if you want to call in. I've got some people in the background here that are actually talking about calling in. And so, so if you understand who you're talking to or who you're listening to, it's this is T Man. He has been on a couple radio shows, although it's been a long time ago, uh, as from from what I know. And I, I'm not sure his reception was was all that friendly. People have since been reading the White Hat reports. I've been commenting on them for a long, long time, and so we're actually uh, very lucky to have a T Man come on the on the show. Uh, I'm going to ask T T Man whether we're able to say anything about the Treasury this evening. Was, was there some activity uh, at the Treasury that you're able to talk about at all? Sure. Uh, what was reported on MSN this morning, which kind of it, it didn't take us all by surprise. We knew it was going to happen. We just we're not prepared for the report to come across mainstream media. But on MSN, there was a uh, the ticker that runs at the bottom of the uh, program, and it stated that the U.S. Treasury has consumed the Federal Reserve, which is something that we knew. Uh, had been happening for quite a while. We've been watching one person after another from the Federal Reserve go across uh, to be employed by the Treasury. Uh, we know that uh, uh, there's a huge transition going on. It's just an unbelievable uh, shift in the financial power of the world. And, and you know, I don't mind confirming to you that that, that shift uh, is undetermined to be good or bad at this point. Um, I think everybody in the world really knows what the Federal Reserve has been doing. Uh, it's been undetermined as to why they've done it. If uh, In 48, we talk about the rabbit hole and the space program, uh, the secret space program, and a number of other items that we've been able to find out the money goes to. Uh, and have had that confirmed by some of the top people in government and some of the top people at, uh, or formerly with Pure Heart. So the um, so it's kind of intriguing that the that the Treasury at this point in time uh, is about ready to come out. We know that the new money is ready to go. Uh, we understand how it's going to come out and when. And I would say that within the next week or so, the world's going to be rather surprised at what's going on. What about uh, what about the? I know a lot of people listening. Some of the people anyway may know something about uh, the dinar. Uh, they know. I don't know if they know you're actually involved with the dinar or uh, to some degree. I don't know if you can talk about that. I don't know if that's you know uh, sort of private information. But is there anything you want to tell people about the dinar uh, and the reval? Because I know there are a lot of skeptical people out there about that as well. Well, uh, from where we sit, you know, we hear a lot of information on a daily basis, and I receive a lot of calls. Uh, from my responsibilities and my charges, the the Iraqi dinar revaluation uh, is something that is very real. It's not a scam. It's something that will happen. It's uh, part of the world financial scene at this point. Uh, the reason why it has not happened is because of the immense uh, political positioning uh, uh, of Obama and the Bushes uh, versus the Chinese and the rest of the world. Um, we've got a game being played in this country. It's not a good game. Uh, it is a game that uh, we're seeing stress cracks in the Bush cabal, and, and people are taking advantage of it. Uh, this is a guy that's had too much power for too long, 
and uh, they're trying to make sure that he's he's eradicated on, in a in a in a not a physical form, but in a uh, in a practical form. Um, the uh, the dinar uh, we still do not know when the public announcement will be. Uh, there are days that we hear that it's been signed off and ready to go, and we anticipate something to occur and by the time the next morning comes around uh, it is not to be had. Uh, we also know that when that happens it's always comes out of the Oval Office and we understand that you know this this uh, Obama is a guy that is uh, erratic. Uh, he's, uh, he's, a, uh, he's just somebody that has adult tantrums. Uh, we've been surprised what we've heard about and um, you know, so we are. Uh, well, when you ready say, to go. when you say he's under orders, oh, absolutely. All right. Yeah, Obama is not uh, is a figurehead. He takes orders from everybody else. He uh, he is the most unpresidential president this world's ever seen. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that well, I'm not going to really address that too specifically at this time. I just want to say, uh, you know, it's great that you came on the show. I wonder if there's anything, if, if we have a delay, we might actually get some extra time here so that if there are people that want to ask T-Man some, some good financial questions, these people are people that follow the money. Anyone who's been reading the darkcabalblogspot.com website over time, I think they've been in operation for close to two years mm -hmm. at this point. Um, I've been printing and uh, linking to their their reports on a on a regular basis, and I've been commenting on them. Sometimes I'm a I'm sort of a hard taskmaster. I've been you know trying to get them to talk about the black projects, about this, that, and the other, and finally they're taking me up on it, <laughs> and so I'm very happy about that. You know, it's all coming out. I mean, sooner or later. But these guys follow the money, so if you have some questions about the financial situation feel free to ask them and we'll and we'll see where that goes so at this time is there anything you want to say to the people you know here's your opportunity obviously uh, your your 15 minutes of fame if you will on my show <laughs> and hopefully we can do this again in the future and I know you guys have a fascinating saga about your group um, why don't you describe the group behind the White Hats? Because I think people would be, some people won't even know who you are. So if you don't mind. Well, the, the, we actually, uh, we are a group of people that uh, have backgrounds. We all understand how the world works. Uh, many of the people that we write about used to be our former employers. And, you know, we're the guys that you never really were able to see. Not, not that you would in the normal course of a day, but most people never saw us. Okay, your backgrounds are in military, in law enforcement, in intel agencies. Absolutely. Uh, across the board, right? Yep, yep. And worldwide, as a matter of fact. Isn't that true yep. also? Yeah, not just here in the U.S., but across the world. Yeah. So, the world, um, world intel, uh, although it's segmented by country for obvious reasons, there's a lot of cross intel that goes back and forth. So we have uh, we have that same information from those relationships at uh, high level, medium level, low level. Uh, we get uh, we get information from all levels. And when I, I would say that when you're reading a white hat report, what most people don't know is that we kind of talk about this retail wholesale concept about leadership being on the wholesale level and the, the, the quote-unquote common folk being on the retail level. Uh, it's sort of a bad analogy, but it fits the description. And on the wholesale level, when we print a report, the world usually stops. Uh, people want to find out if they're named. They want to find out if their country's involved. They want to find out uh, how that report relates to them their environment, their responsibilities. Uh, I can tell you, uh, I've been up on the Hill in, in Washington, D.C., uh, the day that we release a report. And and you talk about people running around with their hair on fire. Uh, you know, you get the aides, you get all the secondary, tertiary people to the senators and the congressmen 
carrying their stack of books, papers, briefcases, and on top they've got the white hat report. And and you can tell nobody's doing anything till they assess whether or not their boss is involved in the white hat report. A lot of that's because of you folks. Uh, you take our reports, you read them, you you embrace what we're saying, and and you hold people accountable. Accountable. Uh, here in the United States, uh, you know we're we elect leaders. We elect leaders to do things the correct way. And unfortunately, for a great many years, uh, you know we've had this this neo-Nazi concept going on: uh, take over the world, control people, do this, that, and the other thing. And although it's great to poo-poo what I just said as a big joke, uh, you know, people need to take a look around. FEMA camps, uh, what's going on in the world today is an exact example. You know, where has all the cash gone? Whose accounts are all the cash uh, or has all the uh, cash in the world gone to? You know, why are we having to do a financial reset worldwide? Um, Read 48, you're going to see some things that will absolutely flabbergast you uh, as to some of the accounts and some of the groups that we put out. It will, it will literally blow you away. And when you're done reading it, you're going to be able to say, what the hell's going on? And why am I affected this way? So, hope that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I think you're going to have a lot of people sort of... Uh sitting on the edge of their seats. I think they're going to be excited to, to read what you've got coming out. Um, this is, is certainly an unusual situation. Uh, I've got a, actually, I've got a person who is, works with me on uh, my, my Blue Science website who's asking a question, Matt Pulver, and he's a, what people don't know about Matt is that he has a background in the financial world. And he's asking a, a question here. I'm going to read his question. It says, what is the essential mechanism that will give value to the dinar upon its revaluation? Can, mm. you, can you address that, please? Sure. Um, for those of you that have a financial background, there's, uh, I'm going to create an analogy, uh, which, which would be the simplest way to embrace this. If you were to run a corporation, uh, you would be, as an officer and director of that company, primarily responsible for not only its operations, but the results of those operations. And the results of an operation usually have to do with a financial position. You either made money or you didn't make money. Uh, countries kind of run the same way in concept, in that the value of the money that they put out is based on its assets and its liabilities. And that is, it's kind of like the United States where we have uh, long-term debt, short-term debt, and the like. Now, if you take, if you use the concept of a balance sheet, when the United States went in and uh, invaded Iraq, it was mandated by international law to be responsible for all of the mechanisms necessary on all levels to bring that country back up to an operational position, just like a company. One of those items has to do with the financial uh, aspect of the country, and you know that gets involved with the IMF, the World Bank, and it gets involved with tradable currency or an exchangeable currency, etc. In order to get to that point, you have to be able to have a saleable product. And what's that saleable product in Iraq? That would be, of course, it's oil. If you take a look at a balance sheet, you do not have the availability of putting in-ground assets, meaning it's oil that's in the ground, onto the balance sheet because they have something what they term as a specific kind of report called an assay. And that's where they estimate through all the scientific research uh, that they employ, the amount of oil in the ground. The, the problem with that is you cannot put that assay or that estimation on a balance sheet in the asset section or side of the uh, balance sheet. The, the way that you do create a value for that is, in this case, by contracts. 
So, you know, Russia, the U.S., China, Europe, South America, all these countries will enter into long-term contracts for so many barrels of oil a month at such a rate, and then there's, you know, escalation, de-escalation clauses based on market for the value of that oil. And they can then estimate what that financial value is to the country. And they put that on the asset side of the balance sheet. Well, along with that will come liabilities. In this case, there are certain liabilities that the country will have, but because it's been rebuilt and it's, and it's reset, their liabilities are very few. Now, when you do assets minus liabilities, you come up with something extra, meaning it's like in your household. If you bring in $1,000 a month and you only pay out 500 you can put 500 into your bank account and you have a net worth of $500. In a country, you take all of your saleable product, you reduce that number by your liabilities, and you have a net worth. That net worth equates to the strength of the dollar. So if they only if they have a thousand dollar net worth and they print one thousand one dollar bills, that each bill is worth exactly one dollar. But if their liabilities go up and they have five hundred dollars worth of net worth against a thousand dollars or a thousand bills at a dollar, then the value of their dollar goes up and down. You hear that on the nightly reports, you hear that in the newspaper where they talk about the strength of the dollar, the strength of the euro, the strength of the yen, the strength of one currency versus another currency. In this case, we're talking about a revaluation of the Iraqi dinar because there's no market for the dinar. So it has a very minimal value. At this point, when they come out and when they revalue the dinar, and we're, we're just finishing up the answer to this question. Uh, do you want to just finish that last statement? Yeah. The, um, so the, the result is this, this much embattled Iraqi dinar revaluation. Um, the, the, all of the conversation of um, you know, what the dinar is going to come out at, uh, what's its value, is all, it's all rhetoric because it's going to be controlled. Um, but rest assured, it will come out. Uh, there is a value to it. Uh, for those of you that hold dinar now, you will see an increase in your dinar. And, you know, be happy and uh, blessed that, that you've had an opportunity to be involved in something that is once in a lifetime. Uh, it'll bestow many financial blessings on many of you. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's going to um, amaze a lot of people to hear that. So uh, we're getting a thank you from Matt Pulver. Uh, I guess that satisfied that question, and we can appreciate uh, it. We can, we can open for other questions, uh, basically, from out there. Um, at this time, I want to also bring up the global settlements. Mm -hmm. is, is it possible for you to talk a little bit about that? Because uh, just like the dinar, there's a lot of skeptics out there in regard to the global settlements. And there's a lot of people that don't seem to understand it. Doesn't matter how many reports you put out there, <laughs> I, I think people are still perplexed uh, and wondering if that's a scam. You know, the the, the global settlements are not a scam. Um, it, actually, it's in the reverse. What is a scam is what's going on in the world to try to maintain control. When the global settlements happen, a lot of the current power base that we fight will be out of a job and their positions will be uh, uh, minimized and the, the, um, the, the basis of our fight truly will be over, although it won't be because these guys always try to penetrate all the other organizations that will be replacing like the Federal Reserve and, and some of these others. But there's a, a huge battle for control of the financial world. And and so far, they're winning. Uh, you know, up to this point, they've been winning. They're ready to bankrupt this world. If, in fact, the global settlements go through and the Iraqi dinar goes through, it puts fresh resources, cash, 
back into the world economy. And that means that their control has um, uh, been lessened. Their grip has been lessened dramatically, and they will not have the control over the things that they want to have control over. You know, commodities, uh, the resources of other countries, the MTN trade platform markets, the control over our congressmen and our, sen our, uh, our senators, uh, control over the Vatican and the Vatican accounts, the, uh, you know, all of the, all of the stuff that, you know, we're not supposed to talk about is uh, uh, going to come to an end. And what we're hoping is that the, the white hats can be a voice to say, look, you know, people, get a grip, grow a pair, stand up. If you're elected, you best be looking out for my interest if, if uh, you represent me in my district. And, and by God, you better uh, represent the people of this country. If you're in other countries, uh, you know, that have a different form of government, you better hold your leaders accountable because they're selling you out. And, and, and they're selling you out for this deep foxhole that they've all been, uh, uh, they've all bought into. Okay, but, but about the, the global settlements, uh, can, you, can you talk about literally the, the mechanation behind the global settlements? How will that come to pass? And, and what is the global settlements for the people that are listening that may not be up to speed? Yeah. The, I won't get into all of how the global settlements have come about, but over the course of years, there have been many individuals who have been very concerned about primarily from outside the U.S., the, uh, uh, the status of the U.S. They've recognized that the U.S. is the leader of freedom and the voice of, of conscience in the world, even though it's a little messed up at this point in time. And, and these folks uh, have contributed funds through mass resources uh, that, that they control to make sure that the United States is strong. Add to that, uh, uh, the, the, the resources from other countries that have been made available, from China that have been made available, that are currently here in this country and ready to be distributed. These are cash uh, in kind. Um, uh, these funds are here. These funds are available. And they're available in the form uh, of, uh, of deposits in various of the banks here in the United States and around the world. And the, all they need to be is released. The battle is for the release of those funds. Okay, but the global settlements themselves, what are they? I mean, in other words, what happened to create a situation? And, and I guess, do we have to go into trading programs to talk about this? No. I mean, what are we talking about when we're talking about uh global settlement funds where do they come from why do these people why are they owed money uh and and so on well it's not that they're owed money is that these are funds that are freely given to keep the world strong these are funds that people in their in the in their uh this comes from your side of the world um uh, they had the forethought in whatever shape and form that is to see what's going to happen to the world and the united states and many, many years ago, decades ago, they put funds together that were required uh, to be used only for the safekeeping of the United States and the world economies. These funds are freely given. There's no debt, no obligation. There's no liability anywhere in the world other than to release these funds for the benefit of mankind. Okay. And, and who's holding or how's, how's that being held back? primarily by George Bush Sr. and his minions, okay, that would include, uh, we refer to them as 41, 42, 43, and 44, along with all of the people that, uh, that they control uh, in all the various forms and fashions. Uh, the people of this world need to demand that these funds are released. They need to tell their leaders. They need to show up on their doorstep. They need to say, we want the funds released. We're sick and tired of what's going on in the world. We want these funds made available immediately uh, and, and, and responsibly under the people that are supposed to have them. Okay. Uh, so in terms of the gold, are these funds backed by gold? Are they coming from gold? Well, everything comes from gold. Really? Yeah. 
Okay, well, I thought they were just printing paper money out of nothing. Daenerys, no, so that's the Federal Reserve. <laughs> that's, <laughs> okay, that's so, not everybody else. All right, so the global settlement funds are they based? They're based on gold. What yes, in the Philippines all, or in somebody's uh, in different countries in or different what? Country. Everything's gold backed. Mm -hmm. um, it's all responsible money. It's it's not fiat money or foo foo money. It's all responsible money. It, these are old sources. They res they believe only in. Um, responsibility in a, in a financial sector. Uh, you know, fiat money is a game play based on the rabbit hole. And, uh, and I think if you take a look at a timeline over the last several decades and you match the, the cash, the fiat money, and all the shenanigans that have gone on with the theft of money and their, their absolute mass need to consume cash versus what's going on on your side of the world, the rabbit hole, you know, all the space technology and all of that, you will see a very interesting parallel and pattern. And, 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 and it'll, it, it will absolutely give you a moment of pause doing the, hmm, what's going on here? And what are we not being told? Okay. I've got another question here as well. Uh, someone wants to know how they can redeem their dinars. The, uh, the the system has a protocol buried somewhere, uh, but they've not released that protocol for the redemption. So, unfortunately, I can't tell you that. What I do know is that uh, very soon, and I don't know what that means, uh, it could be anywhere from a day to a month, but, you know, we're we're kind of at a point where we're waiting and watching for a lot of this to happen. We hear a lot of stuff on a daily basis. We, we don't have the proper info coming out yet. So I'd like to tell you what that protocol is, but I can't. But it will be out there. It will be announced. You will see it. And it, uh, when they do announce it, it would, shouldn't be a lot of hocus pocus. Uh, well, let me say this much, uh, uh, that I understand that some, like if you hold dinar from a certain organization, you go back to that organization in some cases, right? And they handle it. Or maybe yeah. you go to the bank directly. And in yeah. that case, I know at least Wells Fargo is going to be one of the central places where you're going to redeem dinar for what I understand. And, and, and they've not, uh, right now, Wells Fargo is one of the uh, primary banks uh, that's been assigned to handle the the big side of the transactions um, does not mean that you should be running to their retail uh, branches and banging them over the head with your basket of dinar. They probably won't know what to do with it. Um, in fact, I can almost guarantee you they will not know what to do with it. Um, the retail side, meaning the common folks uh, who are holding, you know, a couple hundred or maybe a million dinar, um, you know, you, you're just going to have to sit tight and wait for those announcements. It'll happen. It's it's coming about, and the world pressure is forcing it to happen. And I could go through a long litany, which would take quite a while. Uh, of the reasons why, but I think for the time span we have right here, just know that it will happen. Okay, uh, we've got another. We've got another person um, asking. Uh, hold on one second here. Um, <laughs> I, I'm trying to get back to now. The questions are kind of pouring in, so I want to get back to the top and and see. Okay, what happens if the U.S. goes bankrupt? Hold on to both butt cheeks and go for a ride. <laughs> Okay, but isn't the idea here uh, to some degree, now Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that if the dinar revalues and the global settlements happen, money will go back into the system that the downturn or the bankruptcy of the U.S. that even if it was planned uh, will be put off at least for a time. Is that well, right? Or is that too much of an assumption? Well, it's it's not so much an assumption. It is more of the answer is far greater and far deeper. Um, the Federal Bank, or the uh, excuse me, the uh, Federal Reserve Board of New York, uh, which is the one that uh, we heard about in the news this week, where a young, uh, I think, Bangladeshi lad was uh, planning to uh, blow it up. Um, that entity 
if if I mean to be not so facetious, if you gave them a hundred years to get out of debt, they couldn't do it. Okay. The Federal Reserve does not have the opportunity to get out of the total debt that it has amassed. And from our standpoint, what we see is that the the pattern of the cabal is is that they will load up an entity with so much debt and then they will bankrupt the entity. That way they can have an opportunity to scatter the records and nobody can find out what they did. Well, if you take a look at Foxhole and you take a look at the space programs and the vast amount of cash that's being required to fund all of those operations, um, and if you take a look at a certain section of the balance sheet on the budget side of the U.S. budget, you'll see that none of the foxholes in there. So, so you the call, don't you call it that you call it off balance sheet? Is that right? It's all off balance sheet. Right. Everything's off balance sheet. And when you're off balance sheet, it's very difficult to control the tracking of what's going on. And and it's purposely done. It is not something that's done by fallacy. It's something that's purposely done. And if you want to see the greatest uh, uh, the, the greatest, one of the greatest examples of off balance sheet numbers, take a look at 48, because we're going to give it to you in, in dollar amounts that you will, even if you had a year, you would not be able to come up, as most people could say, well, this is a hundred, a thousand, a million, a billion, a trillion. You get past a trillion, and you get past a trillion by 10 sets of three zeros. How much money is that? see and and we're here in the United States the large one of the largest countries in the world we're 15 trillion 16 trillion dollars we can quantify that we can get our arms around it but when you see what these pools of cash are and we're not going to demonstrate one in one instance we're going to demonstrate close to 400 under one entity with zeros going in the stratosphere so to speak absolutely yeah I get that. And that's just one right. very minute example of what we're going to show you. And we could sit here and show you all day long. And that's that's off-balance sheet money, right? Absolutely. And that means it's going into the secret space program and being run by the secret government. All right. So next question. Let's see. Hold one, hold one second here. And may I say one thing about the bankruptcy? Sure. The, the United States has been bankrupt before. You just never knew about it. And, and it's happened actually at least two times. What's happening is that they just flip the entities. So, you know, we talk about de jure, de facto, we talk about all of that lingo about, you know, how does it happen and, you know, are we a republic and are we this and are we that. Somebody needs to sit down other than me and the white hats, especially the guys that are talking about that, and they need to sit down and, and actually understand the machinations that entities go through, including the United States, and and what happened at that point in time that created such a disparity in the financial realm that they had to make a shift. And, 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 and if you understand that, you're going to take a look at what's going on at the Federal Reserve. You're going to take a look at what's happening in the, in, the, in the worldwide markets, in the MTM markets. You're going to take a look at who's controlling the worldwide MTM market, which is Bush. And, and you're going to wonder who the financial guru wants to be in the world and why. And that's the world is fighting this at this point. And we're just, we're just the most vocal SOBs on the, on the planet right now who want this to end. And we are soliciting the support of all leadership around the world and all people of commonplace that want to have a voice and want to hold their leaders to accountability for the betterment of them and their families. Okay. <laughs> Good point. Uh, all right. So let's see. Uh, someone is asking how much longer they can hold this up. Oh, they're, they're past their point. Everything you see right now is merely a hologram and not in the, in your world hologram. <laughs> it's, an, it's, it's fictitious. It's all PR. And it's, it, it's all BS. Everything you see is nothing more than trying to put band-aids on the leaking dike long enough to gain enough of an up uh, hold and a position so as they still have a chance to hold on to power. Okay, so in other words, their time is up, and and you think uh, at this point it, it it it's just biding their time, Pretty or much. whatever. Yep. 
Okay. Um, somebody wants to ask about the Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve notes being released and the end of the Fed contact contract at the end of the year. Well, my understanding is what we just said at the beginning, maybe they weren't listening, was that the Treasury just took over the Fed. Right. So that may eliminate any, any, any need for the, the contract to re, uh, to re up with the Fed. Am I wrong? Well, um, the. I'm, I'm or are go, they going to restructure it? What's well, that? see, and that's where we don't know. Oh, you don't know? Yeah. So the Fed is a very clandestine organization, even though it has a front to it. You're going to see a series of moves with Bernanke and a lot of the internal people, like we have seen already, moving over to Treasury. That, and basically, what we're starting to see is that the Fed, that the Fed is out, and that the United States has started to reassume all of its financial prowess. And the Federal Reserve, I'm going to say this in the most simplistic terms, and understand that this these conversations are so deep. And, and, and they're not philosophical, they're actual, okay? But they're so deep and they're involved in, in so much international and global finance and what it means that they have to be very careful. Federal Reserve um, is about keeping the printing presses running. And there are warehouses around the world that have nothing more than stacks and warehouses of cut dollars uh, from the Federal Reserve. And those printing presses keep running. And every time they need something, they crank up the printing presses again, like they did with the 15T that we write about with Pure Heart. Um, we, don't, we really don't know at this point in time whether or not the Federal Reserve or a derivative of the Federal Reserve, derivative's a bad word in this day and age, but a derivative of the Federal Reserve is going to exist. What we do know is that the Federal Reserve as an entity, and, and I would say that many of the people that disagree with my position need to think about this. The Federal Reserve as an entity is not corrupt. The people are corrupt. Okay, The people behind it, the people that are controlling, the Illuminati, the Bilderbergers, the Bushes, all these people that are trying to control what's going on. If you control the money, you control the people. Now, if it is that the Federal Reserve goes away, what happens to something as simple as Western Union? Because that's all controlled by the Federal Reserve. Western Union is a, is a company with a product, but all of the systems that they use are Federal Reserve systems for the transfer of cash. It's not Western Union systems. They're not building their own new cellular towers, okay? They are using the Federal Reserve system. So if you have an emergency and you need to send 50 bucks to somebody you know across town, you won't be able to do that. If you want to go to an ATM machine and take cash out, push cash in, transfer back and forth, you won't be able to do that. If you're a business and you have letters of credit or you have trade credit lines that are international credit lines, you will not be able to execute those lines. International trade stops. Okay, but but if the Treasury takes over for the Federal Reserve, what, won't they just keep those things in operation? Well, that's what we're hoping. And we don't know yet, and I don't think anybody really understands except the inside core, exactly what's going to happen with that Federal Reserve system. What about all the mechanisms? For example, DTCC. If you go on the Internet and you look for DTCC, Take a look at all of the financial systems that are loaded underneath that website. And, and DTCC is a Federal Reserve system. It's owned by Federal Reserve, the people. If you go to BIS, the Bank of International Settlements, that's all primarily Federal Reserve. So all the financial systems in the Western European economy, there's five economies, it, or monetary systems. If it is that the Western European monetary system goes down because it is such a huge portion of the world's monetary system, the world comes to a screeching halt. Now, will they allow that to happen? No. They'll figure a way around it. They're prudent men. And, and when it comes down to somebody trying to hijack a financial system, 
I can assure you that there are government people in government that are fully aware of what's going on. They're quiet. They're working behind the scenes, and they aren't going to allow this to happen. Okay. Uh, well, we could get into a whole discussion about that, uh, but I, I kind of want to let other people ask their questions here because you and I can talk about this if there are no questions. Um, let me see uh, what's the next thing here. We've got what will be the checkmate of the current system? Does that question even make, make sense? Well, no, it, it makes sense. Um, this comes from uh, Adele in Australia. Um, you know, Adele, your, your system's part of the Fed system down there. So you're as affected as we are here in the States. Okay, don't read any more names out. Okay. Go right ahead. All right. Sorry. About <laughs> I have to watch this guy. <laughs> so the, um, but it's interesting, you know, you say checkmate. It, the question is, is not really formed properly, and I can take it about six different ways. But what will the checkmate be? Um, the checkmate is always about people. In this case, who's going to win the overall battle of control? Will it be the old guard or will it be the new guard? And and that's where the battle is. So your your checkmate is who will win the battle by virtue of of sides. You've got a good side and a bad side. And and because I'm a white hat, I view it that way. Um, so the question will be that, or the, the answer to the question is the checkmate is when the people decide who wins this battle for control. And that's, that's something that's really tough to put a, uh, an answer to. Okay, but it, let's just say if the global settlements in the dinar go through, is that the end of, that, of the battle of the systems? I mean, you're saying it's a reset. Is the, is the battle over or is it just begun? That's another tough question because it's based on people. Okay, if it was a mechanism, a filing system, and there was control of that, that would be one way to answer. Um, my personal fear is that as we watch what, what right now looks like the end of the Federal Reserve System, it, the, the question in my mind is, you know, they've plundered so much cash, they've stolen uh, from all sectors, you know, we had a guy named Joe Falcone, uh, and Joe had seven hundred million dollars stolen from him by Bush and and his group, and it was put into a trade program. We track the money; we know where it is. But do you think anybody in the system is going to go against Bush? Not happening. Okay. <laughs> I've, I've got to, okay, go, keep talking. I'm, I'll try to take this out, outside. Okay. So the, there are many. The question is, how do you, um, how do you quantify it? And how do you take it back uh, uh, from the people that stole it? very difficult to do. How do you quantify anything relative to um, uh, any of the thefts, uh, any of the dollars? Uh, how, do you, how do you quantify any one aspect of any of this? You got the MSM, you've got PR, you've got lies, deceit, everything going on to cover all this up. There's no, uh, there's no singular specific answer on uh, how to uncover it. That's why we have something like the White Hat reports. When, when we started out with the White Hats, we really didn't want to do a blog. We, we actually used it as a communication piece because we knew that it was going to get picked up by the people that we wanted to see it. It's not like we could go up to their office, knock on their door, and say, hey, this is the message we want to deliver. We, we selected a blog. Uh, and, and look what's happened since then. It's it's. Are you still there? No. Hello. 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 Oh, there you are. There you you all cut out. Uh, we got about three minutes. Show or just to be before a break? Uh, the show. Uh, Hawk shows up next. With reality you, check. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh, we appreciate that. Thank you for giving us the time. Uh, okay. We'll uh we'll let Matt uh. Uh, will the team in uh, fi finish up here and um, 
and and I, I'm not sure what you were were saying there, but I, I know that we have a lot of questions back to back here, and uh, maybe they're just not going to get them, their questions answered. How much time do we have uh, exactly? Uh, about two minutes. Uh, Hawk, if you pull down your chat, you're, you're not at the bottom. We've been trying to get get your attention. Here comes Hawk now. Yeah, well, I'm not. I was trying to get the questions. Here. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> hey, this is Nighthawk. Um, I, I don't mind you if you go over. If we can kind of rifle a little faster, we're spending about 20 minutes on a question. Um, but I would really, I, I don't even know who you're talking to, but I'd like Carrie, if possible, for you to get him back for like two two weeks in a row for a really good two-parter. So we can delve into this. This is uh, okay. Well, this this is T Man again. Let me type there. Uh, you know, the White Hats are, are well known actually around the internet, and I also release their um, their their communiques to the people. Right. So oh, I just I, I didn't I I got in here um, like 20 minutes before midnight, so I just kind of just myself got uh, rolled into this, but uh, I. Uh, think this is very interesting uh, information we're getting. You've got huge numbers, and I, I think this would make a really good uh, in-depth two-parter, in my own opinion, being somebody that's just like you in media. So it'd be okay. cool if we, could, if we could line that up. Yeah, this is a unique situation. This person is not always available to do this kind of thing. Uh, I've just put his, his website in the chat here. If you could put that in both, uh, in, I put it here on the Skype. You can put it into the chats. Uh, that would be great, and that way people will know who we're talking to. Um, he's one okay. of the white. And okay, well, uh, I'll what, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and roll to one, and uh, and then I'll do my show. Then that's fine. I, I can do my show whenever I want. So. <laughs> I see, so do you want us to continue, or what? I'm sorry, I don't understand yeah, what you're saying. Go ahead, continue. We'll skip all the breaks and. Uh, uh, you, you got another 28 minutes, and go for it, and then I'll take I'll take on. All right, excellent. Okay. Great. People will appreciate it. This man has a great deal of experience in the financial sector, so uh, that's where he's talking from. And uh, I guess we'll go back to whatever he was answering, uh, and I will advise him to keep his answers short. He he actually may be called in the middle of this. We don't know. Uh, there's a lot going on. If people can appreciate that. Um, this thing is not a moving target. He's actually um, involved in some of this in the background, and um, so so let me let me see where we were. Mm -hmm. uh, we were done with the checkmate. Uh, as far as the um, the global settlements and the bank for international settlements, did you talk about that? No, it, it doesn't have anything to do with one another. Okay, they're different. So th you're talking about the IS and the global settlements are two different things. Yeah. Um, I, I guess, let me see here. We've got, what about military support for the release of the global settlements? Um, you know, the military is going to remain quiet. Um, they're, you know, realistically, you know, everybody wants to claim that they've got military support and, you know, they want to go through all of that. It, it, the reality is the military is not going to say anything. They are a very neutral party. They represent all Americans. And, you know, if it gets to the point where there is such a calamity going on here, then they have the ability to step in. We're not at that point. And, um, you know, I think for anybody to claim that they have total military support is, is a ludicrous comment. Now, having said that, does the military know what's going on? Hell yeah. You know, you, you better believe it. They know everything going on. They 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 watch all aspects, and they're and and that's what they're charged to do. They're charged to protect us. Um, you know, the unfortunate part is is that you know you get into the concept of of do they or can they protect against the um, financial collapse? Well, that's unfortunately not their job, and it's um, you know that's the job of other people, and they have to allow those people to work. Do they have a voice? You know, yeah, they do. Doesn't mean it's going to be taken. No. Next question. Okay. Uh, all right. And thank you again for letting us take some time here. Uh, Golden Fort Knox. What happens if we, if we find there's none there? I thought we found out there was none there. Can you elaborate? Yeah, there's none there. Now, now, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
you get mad, you shake your fist. You know, everybody thought Fort Knox was the uh, the epitome of our uh, uh, of our gold uh, collection arm. It's not. Never really has been. It's more of a um, what do you call it? The, um, the national icon. Uh, well, the the facility is a national icon, but the concept is more of an urban legend. I see. You see. So. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, what form will the global global settlements take at our level? What will this look like? Um, in, in reality, most people probably would never know about the global settlements uh, unless you're you happen to be in blogdom and you happen to see something that says that the settlements have been uh, in place, kicked in place. Um, the form that probably would it would be best viewed to the public is through job creations, major projects, infrastructure, um, upgrading of, um, you know, we've seen proposals to upgrade everything from the, the electric grid to mass transportation, um, you know, sewers and water, um, you know, telecommunications, next generation of all that. So it's all part of it. Okay, uh, next question. And, and we're going to kind of blow through these a little fast just so people can uh, appreciate that we have limited time uh, so we can try to get to everything. How much is one dollar, oh, whoops, how much is one American dollar in dinars? Um, right now, I guess. I'm going to, at this very moment, I'm going to let you extrapolate the numbers, but you can buy one million dinar. For approximately one thousand dollars for many of the dealers uh, around the country, so bust that down to uh, an equivalent of one dollar. Okay, uh, let's see. And next question is: uh, Will the money I have in the bank retain its value? I mean, that's a good question. I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a corollary to that because. Isn't it possible that the dinar could revalue and then they could shoot the dollar down to, you know, to zero? Uh, and I'm not sure how they'll do that, but isn't it possible they could do that? Yeah, it, it is. But what's going to make it a little bit more difficult is there's going to be a transition point here. And to be honest with you, I don't have all of the details. They've not be re been released. So all we can do is extrapolate from experience. Uh, the new American dollars, the new American currency is printed and it's ready to come out and it is based on Basel III, which has to do with the value of each of those dollars. There has to be a correlation. The question that, that should be pertinent to you is the dollars from that you currently have in the bank versus the new currency. So it's the good versus the old and whether or not there's going to be a discount, if you will, of the old currency as it relates to the new currency. We don't know that yet. That is, that's not been put out. We've not seen the protocol or the plan for the conversion. So I, I, we can't answer that at that point, at this point. Okay. Uh, looks like they want more about the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve what they're saying are new Federal Reserve notes. How will that transition take place? What happens when the Fed contract is up? It, I, I think in, in a sense we answered this, so if you're, yeah. if you're coming in late to the story here, what you can do is, is listen to obviously the archived radio show and you'll get your answer to those questions. Do you agree with me or do you want to say anything on no, this? No, I agree with that. Okay. Um, <laughs> someone thinks you're a good interesting guest, that's very nice. Um, uh, let's see. I know you'd love to have him back. Uh, okay. What would a different, uh, let me just say that, you know, you have to understand this is Project Camelot. This is Project Camelot radio show. We don't run by, uh, normal rules <laughs> and we, we tend to get some really incredible guests. Uh, there's a reason for that. Um, we don't put a lot of demands on people, and I can say that whistleblowers and people that are that are fighting the good fight, if you want to put it that way, uh, are not always available on a regular schedule. So we will do the best we can, but we cannot promise anything. Okay, uh, on to the questions. What would a different system look like besides the Fed system? Does that make any? Well, it does. Um, as far as 
as far as the ser financial services that are offered, it it is very it would be very detrimental to all of the leadership of the world to take away uh, uh, financial services from people. Um, you may, if you take a look, and I encourage you to answer the question, I would encourage everybody to take a look at what happens from the time you get up in the morning to the time that you go to bed at night. And, and take a look at the electronic exposure that has invaded your life and, and how much of that electronic exposure has to do with the financial system or where you might see some overlaps. Some systems are used, although they're secure, some systems are used simultaneously. So what does a system look like, a different system? I'm not sure that if, if the powers to be are trying to keep things copacetic and they're trying to keep calm uh, in the lands, that there's going to be a, 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 a seamless transition. Everything's going to be available. Uh, they may even try to acquire things like DTC, say the, the Federal Reserve goes bankrupt, um, based on how they are, um, um, how they're formed, which entities are going bankrupt, how all that looks and feels, uh, will determine the actual onslaught system. If it is that uh, you can, you, you're not able to go in and use your ATM card, you know, if you're not able to go to a teller get your money. You know, these are things that they are greatly concerned about because of what the expression of that's going to be once that person leaves the bank. And you're going to get a whole spectrum of emotion um, from from something where they're just cussing the bank out uh, to something that could be extreme. And you get enough of those expressions of emotion in the land of America, you're going to see a need for martial law. You're going to see a need for controlling some of those aspects. Uh, and we have such a socioeconomic base here in the United States that you're not going to be able to segment those groups. You're not going to isolate them because there's going to be emotional spillover into the other groups. So what does it look like? I'm not sure that you're going to actually see any difference. Uh, it, the smart money says Keep it looking as, as close to what it looks like now so that nobody's inconvenienced, so that everything can run smoothly. Okay. Uh, Carrie, can you check the bottom of your Skype, please? Bottom. Okay, hold on one second here. I'm, you know, I'm sorry. We have to skim down through the questions. Uh, let me see. Um, we need to remind everyone that this is a commercial-free, <laughs> listener-supported uh, radio show, and if you would visit the website and support freedomslips.com, uh, they would really appreciate it. They've been skipping breaks. Uh, during those breaks, they obviously remind you it's commercial free. They they need your support, uh, and and I would ask you guys, you know, if you can support the radio station. Um, Rep radio is a great radio station. They've been they've been hanging in there with Camelot for quite a while now. And uh, and they've got lots of great other hosts as well. So if you are able to, if you're in that position, uh, please do help out. Uh, okay, we've got another question from Matt Pulver, so I'm going to skip over there and uh, see if uh, if if you want to answer this. Mm -hmm. The question is: Do the the red nine digit C U S I P numbers on the back of our social security cards really respond to bonds? And if so. Who owns them, and how are they traded? <laughs> Man, it would be the death of me yet. <laughs> so, um, you know what, Matthew, save that question for, for another time, and if, uh, and if you and I ever have the opportunity to meet, or if you want to send an email through Carrie, I guess I'll answer that, because that is, that, that's, you know, they want me to keep these answers short. There's no way I can do it if I answer that. Okay, so you're, you're, you're not... Not postponing the answer because it's controversial. You're simply postponing it because it's too long. Yeah, because I all right. Your sponsor would kill me. That's all right. That's fair enough. Uh, okay. Um. So Matt, uh, maybe you can ask something a little more uh, pertinent to what's going on here. Uh, you know, and I appreciate that question. I I think it's a good one. So I'm not putting down it, the question. It basically, uh, runs to ownership. Who owns us? 
is it runs to who owns us is, right. is what he's saying which is a good answer and 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 i i think that jordan uh jordan maxwell has answered this question on his website by the way <laughs> if you want to do the research to find the answer um let's see somebody's saying can you uh Talk about the take your take on a move away from trading oil in U.S. dollars regarding uh, U.S. politics. Right, that's um, something that's been in the news quite a bit lately, and you know other countries. You know, let me back up. It's something that's been in the news lately, but the U.S. dollar is the world's reserve dollar, and and basically that means that in a in a sentence. Everybody can rely on the dollar to be here, its strength, and, and what it means. Everybody, after World War II, used the reserve dollar and agreed that the United States would, in fact, the reserve dollar. They would be the placard holder for the world. During the last few years, between the politics, the off-balance sheet accounts, um, you know, the, the need to... Um, control the space programs and the foxholes and all of the very silly decisions that they've made for whatever basis, silly decisions that, that frankly has gotten out of control. Uh, we find ourselves uh, disrespected for our financial prowess and we find ourselves disrespected for our political prowess and we find ourselves disrespected as a country. I don't think anybody can disagree with any of that. How it relates to this question is, is that the rest of the world, and this would be the Russians, the Chinese, the Arabs, and whoever else, are not feeling real fuzzy, warm and fuzzy with the United States and the decisions that we've made as prudent financial people. And we've done it all for the sake of an ideology, that ideology being the space program and the foxhole. The the rest of the world is sick and tired of being pushed around. They don't necessarily, from my understanding, get any benefit from the foxhole. They don't receive any benefit from the United States not taking care of its responsibilities worldwide financially. When that happens, you have people that in groups and uh, countries that don't feel real comfortable with putting all its eggs in one basket. So they need to spread those eggs around a little bit or get into different baskets. So when it is that we we're talking about the currency for the oil, uh, what's going to be the quote unquote reserve currency for the oil or how is it going to be traded? They're saying U.S., you know, you're not the brightest, you're not the smartest, you're not the most prudent. Uh, you've done really stupid things because of your own ideologies to take over, to uh, impact going on in, in, in this world called Earth and in other worlds. And, and you've done it uh, religiously and you've done it without rhyme or reason. Therefore, you're not responsible. Hence the basis for your question. Okay, so, uh, well, let me just say that, that there is, uh, and you call it an act, uh, the, the, the writer here asks, says it's an act of war, uh, and, and, and possibly there's a part of the United States, this cabal, who feels it's an act of war to try to move away from having the U.S. as the reserve currency. Isn't that right? Yeah. Are they, I mean, in other words, is it possible countries will go to war over that issue? And it's we possible. know that China wants to be the re reserve cu currency. I don't know if anyone else does or has the, you know, sort of wherewithal to even play in that game. But we certainly know that China would like to be the reserve currency, right? Hmm. And, and you have to take a look to motivation. Um, you know, and, and we get into all the conversations about a country's aspirations. Um, you take a look at it from a, maybe a biblical standpoint, and you hear that you have this big army that's going to be generated from the West coming over and taking over whatever. And then you hear other groups, other ideologies, other talk, whether it be political or another frame of reference, says this country would like to do this, this country would like to do this, this country wants to be this. Everybody has aspirations, but in the big world, you have to be prudent men. And, and the Chinese, I'm going to give you my opinion based off of what I've been told by many leaders worldwide. 
Chinese are not looking to take over the world. The Chinese have more problems at home that they need to concern themselves with, and they're concerned about their own protection. They're concerned about all the things on their home front, just like we are. And if one item in, in another country starts to proliferate, it could be financial, nuclear, doesn't matter, then they have to start taking a look at what's their countermeasure because their intel is telling them, hey, these guys are doing this. So if it is that everybody did the kumbaya and got together, which is not real, but if they were to do that and they were all on one platform, then we wouldn't have these problems in the world except for little guys that want to have big feet. You know, see that in the world. We see North Korea. We see uh, Iran. You know, whether they're created or not, that's the problem. So the the yeah, but, okay uh, the reserve currency issue has got to have uh it's got teeth in other words or legs however you want to look at it in other words sure. uh you know countries such as china mm -hmm. there's there is a move right now Cold it may, it may be uh as i was told posturing by somebody recently mm -hmm. but nonetheless the talk is to get again because of the of the sort of move and because of the way the United States has behaved internationally, there is a move away from wanting to have the U.S. be the petrodollar, as they call it. Right. Right? Right. They want to have sell, buy and sell oil. And in fact, some countries at this time are doing just that. That's correct. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it's a very real issue. Uh, whether it's an act of war is, is a, I, I think, another step along that trajectory. I don't think um, I had a conversation with somebody today, and they said to me that there is no way that the U.S. would let go of being the reserve currency. U.S. may not have any choice. Okay. U.S. is in a very weak position right now. Uh, the U.S. is not what it used to be. Its voice is not heard like it used to be. And they are definitively not respected like they used to be. Uh, there's a difference between respecting. Okay? The call is about bullying. They want what they want. They're going to get what they want. They're going to move in, in the background and get what they want. That's all part of life. That's all part of what goes on in the real world. It depends on how you use it. And it depends on, on the extent to which you decide to use it and how far down that path you're going to go. Right now, they are at the end extreme of their path, and the world is fighting back. And we are hoping that the world has the cojones to say that they have the voice, and enough of the world will get together. They're going to tell the U.S. where to go, and they're doing it right now. Okay. That's just one item on the long list of what they're telling them. Right. All right. Uh, one of the one of the issues, uh, I you know, and I know it's not in the questions here, but. I'm sure they are also saying, uh, no, we're not going to we're not going to go for a war in, in with Iran, right? What I've heard is that that position um, is is a fallacy to think that that's going to happen. They're going to try to push it. There are some groups that are going to try to push it, but you know, there's there's been too many problems with Iraq. There's been too many problems with the infinite, infamous WMD. Um, the, you know, you've got 911 that you have to contend with, and, and it doesn't matter what the books say, it doesn't matter what the commissions say. There are uh, people, in the, everybody in the background of their head says, what if this actually did happen the way that the conspirators, you know, or the conspiracy blogs are saying that it has happened? What happens if that fact happened that way? And, and it was all wrong what we were told, you know? you got two minutes, Kerry. Now we have to worry about what they're telling us in another region of the world, and if that's going to turn out to be World War III, we need to think about that, because we can't have another World War II on our hands. There's too much technology in the last 60, 70 years that has come to, come to forth, and with the space program, nobody knows what the hell's going on. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so basically, you're saying no war with Iran is the position of of a lot of these, you know, out is a lot of the world. Right. Uh, however, the Bush cabal may have something else in mind. Exactly, and the people that we don't see that are trying to run the world. Right. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not just the Bush cabal. So, okay. And, and Camelot listeners know this. Uh, okay, we're going to have to wrap up here. 
uh, thank you, Revolution Radio, for your patience and uh, for being uh, open to having T-Man come on uh, my show unexpectedly in this way. Uh, this is just the, the, the luck of the draw, and we are very lucky tonight. This was, uh, this was a very a, a great thing, and, and this will go down in history uh, in terms of uh, uh, people's being able to, to sort of hear verbally from these guys because they don't often do this. Um, they are on their own on are there on their own website. We've got Dark Cabal uh, blogspot.com uh, put out there and uh, and and so on. And go right ahead, uh, T Man. Say some last words uh, real fast. Here. Um, I just want to thank all of you for listening, and I, I'd like to do one call out if I could. Um, we have a group called the White Hat Auxiliary. Uh, we we kid them about uh, being uh, white hat wannabes, but you know I got to tell you they're a great group of people. They are uh, um, uh, people that support us, provide a lot of information, a lot of feedback, and we couldn't do it without you guys. So we want to thank you guys very much. All right, thank you, thank you so much for listening.